What's happening with Lockbit? Are APTs using LLMs? I'm Allie Diamond, this is ThreatWire, and we're talking about these stories and more. While writing ThreatWire this week, I couldn't open a single website to research stories without seeing this as the top story. It's been thoroughly covered everywhere else, so we're going to do a quick TLDR of what's happening. On February 19th, the Lockbit Group was publicly infiltrated in a joint effort called Operation Kronos by the FBI and the National Crime Agency of the UK. Working together, the government seized their leak site, as well as source code, victim information, and group chats. VX Unaround got a hold of a screenshot of what the Lockbit website looks like from their side, which they published on their Twitter. The story is still developing, so we will cover any updates in next week's ThreatWire. In CVE news, the Linux kernel has become a CNA, CVE numbering authority. This means that the team behind the Linux kernel can now make decisions about CVEs regarding the Linux kernel, as well as assign CVEs to vulnerabilities found regarding their systems. This past weekend, a quiet GitHub account posted hundreds of files exposing internal Chinese government documents publicly. VTuber Azuka, who is also a threat intel researcher, did a great breakdown of what the files contain. According to the write-up, this includes information about spyware created by the eponymous leak name iSoon Information, which, for context, this is a transliteration and translation of the company name. The files contain information about a remote access tool that works on Windows, Android, certain versions of Linux, and Mac, as well as allegedly on any version of iOS, regardless of jailbreaking. There are also specs and information about hardware devices the iSoon company developed, the documents exposed information about a data research platform called Skywalker that allows for information lookup of social media users to find their personal data. In addition, there's many screenshots of employees' chats, as well as highly sensitive employee information available in the documents. This is a huge treasure trove of information. If you happen to be able to read Mandarin, you may end up finding something interesting. Upon recording the show, these documents are still available online on GitHub, and over the next week, we expect more interesting findings to come about. I didn't even know this was possible, but researchers have created a new method to recreate fingerprints to execute a side channel attack on automatic fingerprint identification systems, or AFIDs. The system works by using a phone's internal microphone through any audio recording application like Discord, Skype, FaceTime, etc. And I know we've definitely all heard our friends typing away on their phone during a FaceTime call. So using complex sound analysis algorithms, researchers were able to build their tool called PrintListener. Right now, there exists two programs to hack into an AFID system through fingerprint generation. They're called MasterPrint and DeepMasterPrint, both of which use AI, however, have very low success rates. In the paper's conclusion, they said that they can successfully attack up to 27.9% of partial fingerprints and 9.3% of complete fingerprints within five attempts of the highest security FAR or false acceptance rate setting of 0.01%. This paper was very dense, and in the spirit of our next story, I thought I'd run the paper through ChatGPT and have it summarize it. Normally, I try to avoid using ChatGPT, but I thought that this was a very interesting opportunity. So the following summary was written by ChatGPT. The paper introduces Print Listener, a novel side channel attack leveraging finger friction sounds during screen swipes to infer fingerprint patterns. By processing these sounds, Print Listener extracts first level fingerprint features and synthesizes advanced pattern master prints capable of bypassing fingerprint authentication systems. The attack operates covertly using social media platforms to capture audio, presenting a significant threat to fingerprint security. Experimental results demonstrate print listeners' effectiveness, showing high success rates in real-world scenarios and highlighting the need for improved security measures against such side-channel attacks. OpenAI and its uses have come under widely known criticism. It's a tool that can be used for bad. However, what's actually been stopping a bad actor from using the tool? This week, Microsoft published a report titled Staying Ahead of Threat Actors in the Age of AI, where they outlined their work in collaboration with OpenAI to identify AI-based activities associated with known threat actors. The objective of Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI, including the release of this research, is to ensure the safe and responsible use of AI technologies like ChatGPT, upholding the highest standards of ethical application to protect the community from potential misuse. As a part of this commitment, we have taken measures to disrupt assets and accounts associated with threat actors, improve the protection of open AI LLM technology, 
and users from attacker abuse and shape the guardrails and safety mechanisms around our models. They outline their core principles and actions for mitigating risk of their AI and APIs for use by APTs, APMs, and cyber criminals. The Microsoft team found that no significant attacks use the LLMs provided by OpenAI and Microsoft, but they emphasize that they are still very early in this research. They outlined a few threat actors that they've observed using LLMs in their research. Most important out of the article is the emphasis that they have removed the accounts associated with the threat actors, added more protections on OpenAI from being used by attackers and prevent abuse, as well as added more safety measures around the models. The article has a great outline of how five different studied threat actors have been using LLMs as a part of their tactics, which in tandem, OpenAI published a blog post touching on the termination of accounts linked to threat actors, as well as expressing that the current OpenAI LLMs have limited capabilities for malicious cybersecurity tasks. Thanks so much for tuning into ThreatWire this week. For those of you who didn't see, I actually went live on the Hack5 channel to write this episode with y'all. For those of you who tuned in, I'm super curious to hear what did you think? Did you enjoy it? I normally stream writing ThreatWire on my own accounts, but I thought this week I would switch it up. Thank you so much for tuning in to ThreatWire for the week of February 20th, 2024. If you enjoyed the reporting and want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. Thank you so much, and we literally couldn't do this without you. I'm Allie Diamond, at Ending with Allie everywhere online, including Minecraft. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught. Thumbnails. Thumbnails. Nice.